This is Meek Mill. Famous rapper, used to date Nicki Minaj, but what you may not know is that he's been in and out of jail for over a decade. Philly rapper Meek Mill has just been sentenced to two to four years in state prison. Ultimately, his story is a story of a broken system. How does it feel to be part of the system? Something much bigger than him. Parole and probation are touted to be substitutions for jail time. Their intent is to keep people out of jail. But for millions of Americans, that's just not what's happening. Let's talk about that. I'm Dre McKesson, and this is Truth Be Told. It all started a decade ago in Philadelphia. I know my name, Meek Millie Flores Flames, plus I got that fire man, is coming. In 2007, Meek was arrested the first time. He was 19. Officers showed up at the house where Meek was living, they had a search warrant that they got by telling a judge that they'd seen Meek a day earlier make a drug deal. And when they served the warrant, they say Meek pointed a gun at them and then ran away. Ultimately, he was arrested and they found an unregistered gun on him. Now, Meek denies the cops' claims. He says he was unfairly targeted by the police and beaten up. Now, here's a picture of Meek after he was arrested. Side note, the arresting officer, Reginald Graham, later wound up on a list compiled by the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office of cops who were deemed so problematic that even the prosecutors didn't want them testifying in court. Now, Meek's lawyers have always maintained that the cops got the wrong guy back in 2007. In court, a judge sentenced Meek to jail on a range of charges, including drug and weapons violations, and this is how many years he got on probation. In 2009, after six months in jail, he was paroled to house arrest. Had things ended there, Meek would have gotten off from probation in 2017. But things didn't end when he was paroled and put on probation. Probation is handed down when a person is first sentenced and is served either after a jail term or instead of one. When you're on probation, you're not behind bars, but you have to check in with the court, sometimes for a very long time. It's basically the criminal justice system's way of saying, we're gonna keep a close eye on you. Probation sentences can stretch on for years and involve onerous supervision requirements like random drug tests, travel restrictions, frequent check-ins with the court, and even check-ins with judges. A person might not be behind bars, but on probation, they're just one slip up away from going back. Now, keeping people out of jail is the right goal to have. The problem here is that the way we administer probation often backfires. This is Meek's story. In 2011, as his mixtapes were taking off, and they were great, it's what led to his career, he failed a couple drug tests and was given a probation violation. The court was monitoring him in other ways too. Meek needed the approval of a judge to even travel. Now just think about it. He's a rapper, he's performing all over the place. He had to get the judge's approval at all the venues for a tour. That's pretty intense. Now, he slipped up. He received travel violations in 2013, 2014, and 2015. That probation sentence that would have been over by now, it's now up to 2022. Last year on a court approved trip, Meek got into an altercation at the airport in St. Louis. Mill was arrested for a scuffle at the St. Louis airport. I was like, what's up Meek? Can I get a pic? He was like, nah. And I guess some dude in this group got mad. I was scared, you know, I'm at work, so I'm just defending myself, you know what I'm saying? Cause I know he's gonna punch me. So I swung first, you know? Now he got community service in St. Louis, but the court back in Philly, guess what happened? You got it. They credited him with another probation violation. And last August, cops in New York saw an Instagram video of Meek popping wheelies on a dirt bike. And they arrested him for reckless endangerment. It was another violation. Despite all that, Meek's career had exploded. He had two albums certified gold, and one platinum. And in 2016, he won the Billboard Music Award for Top Rap Album. He'd become one of the most recognizable rappers on the planet. Of course, for all the eyes on Meek, none mattered more than those of a certain judge in Philadelphia. Judge Janice Brinkley. Judge Janice Brinkley. Judge Janice Brinkley. Welcome, Judge Brinkley. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. Meet Judge Janice Brinkley. Now, she's a complicated figure in this entire story. This woman's connection goes back to the very beginning, and it underscores the way that a single judge can have a huge impact on one person's case, like in this one. The judge who Mills lawyers accuse of having a personal vendetta against the rapper. Meek's attorneys are now trying to get her removed from the case. They claim Judge Brinkley has been way too invested in their client. For starters, she showed up when Meek was performing community service to check up on him. This is not a normal thing. Judges don't just like randomly go around the community service to see what's happening. She also ordered him to take etiquette classes. And by the way, his lawyers have said she's done some other really odd things too. 
For instance, they've said in court documents, she asked me to record an updated version of the Boys to Men ballad on Bending Knee, apparently so she could hear her name in the song. They've also claimed she asked him to leave his management company, Jay-Z's Rock Nation, and instead hire a local Philadelphia manager. Now, Judge Brinkley denies these allegations and said there's no evidence they're true. She says she stands by her original decision to sentence him to prison, saying she, quote, committed no error. And she's right. There's technically no error right now. The way he's been dragged through the system is the way the system currently works, but it doesn't have to be the way that we build the system. That His case alone is an indictment of how the system is functioning. It's worth noting, Meek had racked up not a single new criminal conviction, just supervision violations. In other words, nothing that would ever, on its own, earn several years in prison. Now look, the worst part of this case is that Meek's story is decidedly not extraordinary or even unusual. We just know him because he's famous. But there are thousands out there with similar stories. The U.S. Department of Justice said Pennsylvania, where Meek is from, had one of the largest probation populations of any state in the country. About a third of Pennsylvania's state prisoners are probationers or parolees sent back to prison. Today, we've got nearly this many people in this country caught up in the system of so-called mass supervision. And guess who's being supervised? In 2014, a study of probation at four American municipalities found that black probationers had greater odds than anyone else of having their probation revoked. We now have more African Americans under criminal supervision than all the slaves back in the 1850s. And for what? Many times, it's for little slip-ups. Often, like Meek Mill, probationers have merely violated the terms of their supervision. Incarcerated, in other words, for technical violations. The good news is that some states are pushing reform efforts. For instance, these states are looking to improve their probation systems. Meek's case helps put the problem into clear focus. Now, if we're smart about it, we'll use Meek Mill's case to think deeper about alternatives to incarceration, to think about how to change probation so it's not just like a pathway back to jail. You have the power to work to change this at the local and state level wherever you are.